How we doing, friends? Welcome back to Continues to Tick. Time continues to tick. It is the main message of this channel. And through time, friends, you're going to have to make decisions. I mean, we are already in June. This is the middle of the year. Continue to make the moves that you've been planning. If you haven't moved on the goals, right, that you've set for yourself for this year, just know you already lost half the year. So it's okay. Just realize where you're at but move, begin to move, take action, take baby steps towards your goals. Zooming out for me, friends, this year, it's been positive. I just started my new job and for the topic for today's video, I'll be breaking it down as well as sharing with you the difficult decisions of career development. So this is gonna be the topic for today's video. Use the timestamps down below if you wanna skip you know, my portfolio review for the topic. I don't know why you do that. <laughs> Most people skip the topic probably towards the end, but use the timestamps as you wish. But friends, here we are. You could see it. We're at $85,407.78. And it's pretty crazy to see. I'm only investing $100 every week. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty scary if I had to be honest, the way these markets continue to just move up higher and higher. You know, I've talked about this before, you know, this disconnection in society and income, you know, feeling like the dollar isn't buying you what the dollar used to buy you, you know, a couple months ago, definitely years ago, it almost feels like every time you go to get groceries or something, right, to buy something, it's just more expensive and you're just losing the value of the dollar. Well, if you're investing in the markets, you know, everything is going up higher in the markets as well. It's pretty insane to watch. But nevertheless, friends, here we are now crossing the 85K mark. I didn't make it a milestone video because it's kind of in between. My last milestone was at 80K. The next real goal will be at 90K. And at this rate, I mean, truly, I have no idea when we'll hit it. We'll see. Maybe it's sooner than I even realize. But let's switch this to the all time view here. This is the chart. If you've been here for a while, you already know. According to this chart here, it says I started the portfolio on July 19th. I actually started it on July 20th with my initial funds. And ever since then, we've continually just invested and funneled money into this dividend portfolio. Early on, it was at a much quicker rate. You know, life happens. But as you could see, you know, it just continues, right? We'll see in a decade from now what this looks like. But we're just taking it month by month, year by year, and over time. You know, we'll be in decades. We're already in June. When we hit July, you know, that'll be four years for this dividend portfolio. So soon enough, I'll be doing my four year video, which is pretty crazy. All time, according to M1 Finance, it says I have a money weighted rate of return of 51.78%. I'm not a fan of the money weighted rate of return. I'll show you here in a second, you know, a more transparent return, at least percentage wise. But as far as money weighted rate of return, it's 51%. So take that as you will. It says market gain all time with this money weighted rate of return is 15,000. Dividends earned all time. I don't think you can really fluff this, but over the course of the time of this portfolio, I've earned $5,637.84. So that's pretty big. And then if you consider the fact that I've been dripping, right? Reinvesting these dividends back into the portfolio every time, you know, that was money that I didn't even put in. It's money I was given and I put that back into the portfolio. And that is the compounding power behind being a dividend investor. Is that 5K there wasn't mine. I put it back into work for me. Sure, you pay taxes and stuff like that. People like to argue, but you also pay taxes on your income, right? People work overtime. A lot of people like to work overtime. You pay taxes on that too. You know, it's just, it's not here nor there. You know, people can have their opinions however they want. You know, for me, I'm a dividend investor. Of course, I'll be more biased to dividend investing. People who are growth investors are gonna be more biased to growth investing. Neither is a better option. I mean, they're both solid. I just decided to do it this way for my own sanity and my other reasons. One of the big ones being that I'm just a believer of this strategy. I think it will really help me and it'll be up to time to tell me if it was actually the right decision. And as far as all time, friends, let's see what the best return is. It's still tech at 340%, followed by energy at 128%, financials 
and so on and so forth. It looks like we only have two in the red because you know portfolio is never going to be perfect, but to only have two in the red all time is pretty solid when it comes to sectors, right? All my other sectors are green, consumer staples and healthcare are the only two sectors that I have in the red. And consumer staples, you can argue it's practically flat, you know, 0.97%. And then healthcare is not flat, you know, it's down 17%. Um, let's take a peek here. Is it Pfizer or what's going on? So Pfizer is down 27%, Medtronic down 21%. Really big companies, I still think they, well, not I think, they do have a purpose in society. I work in the healthcare field. Uh, people have their opinions of them, but I continue to have them. Each dog has its day is the way I look at it. Maybe they're in the red today. Maybe in a decade from now, they're better off. Um, they still pay a solid dividend and I continue to hold them. But as far as tech friends, this is my best performer. Um, I do want to touch on the fact that, you know, it's NVIDIA. NVIDIA here, it says a return. I take it with the green of salt again. I think it's money weighted here. It says 1,306% return. I don't think that's fully accurate. I have to see how it is that they do their calculation. But nonetheless, according to this, it says a $9,000 gain. What really matters is the actual on the target. For initially, you know, setting up this sector, it was only a 20%, 28% slice of this sector here. Over time, it just ballooned and ballooned and then kept going up. And now it's at 61%. So very overweighted. And this is even with taking out $2,000 of this last year for me to go to Greece. So this isn't even my full NVIDIA over time. I did sell, I think it was about two or four shares, which upcoming now would have been, you know, what, 20 or 40 shares because the stock splits coming up. And just to touch up on that, a few weeks ago, I think about a month ago now, I was contemplating selling a portion of my NVIDIA, um, you know, to help fund a Cancun trip for my parents later this year. It's like a dream trip they've always had in their life to go and do. And I decided to get a little bit, you know, play the system a little bit, take out like a payment plan. And I decided not to sell my NVIDIA, which for me, I think was a better decision. I'm paying, I think, 200 and something dollars in fees for the payment plan for that trip, as opposed to selling, you know, $2,000 of NVIDIA, you know, losing out on all the gains. I think ever since I made that decision, each share of NVIDIA has gone up, each share about 200 and something dollars. And then they also announced a stock split of 10 to one. So for every single share, you're gonna get 10. I have eight, I'm gonna have 80 soon. And yeah, it's all numbers, but I truly believe NVIDIA will continue to just balloon. I mean, they are positioned so well, it's kind of insane. So those are, those are the decisions ultimately you have to make. You know, they're hard, but I think it paid off. They don't always pay off. That's what makes them hard. And as far as like my dividend activity, you can see I still continue to deposit $100 every single Friday, once a week. It's about $433 a month. And that is the pace in which I'm going at currently. I did now take a pay cut with this next job opportunity. And I hope to keep this at my minimum. And then if I have any extra money at all, put more into it. But I think the plan will be $100 every week, probably for the next two years. And maybe that's a more fun, realistic, you know, pattern for people to come and watch because it's, you know, it's pretty feasible. $100 every week is pretty feasible, I think, for a good majority of people, as opposed to when I first started, I was doing $500 a week. You know, I was fresh out of college. I didn't have, you know, a lot of responsibilities, right? So I'm glad that I did that back then. But to do that now, I would need a significant pay bump, right? To maintain the lifestyle I'm maintaining now with my partner, our dog, the way we want to live and to still invest that much. So I'm not quite there right now. I'm hoping to be there in maybe three, four or five years or so again. But as far as like some dividend activity, you know, it's always exciting. Uh, you know, Apple paid me $3. O paid me 10. Alliant pays me eight. P&G 986 here. General Dynamics, ABM, you know, so on and so forth. We got a couple buys with the drip going back in to the portfolio. $15, you know, worthwhile to say, Verizon. So I like showing you this one here with the holdings. Yeah, I do have 51 positions. My cost basis is $70,000, you know, 70,700 if you want to get specific. And I feel like this is the most realistic return for my portfolio at the moment. 
as opposed to the money weighted rate of return. It says my unrealized gain is of 20%, 20.79%, which equates to $14,700. That is how much I've gained from this portfolio as it sits today. It's a 20% return for the portfolio, not that 51% money weighted rate of return. That just, it still continues to confuse me. I like just seeing it, boom, this is where you're at. You know, this is how much you put in, this is how much you've gained, you know, this is where you're at. That's how I like looking at it. I think it's more clear and more transparent for you guys as well. And then also, before we leave, you can see here, unrealized gain by NVIDIA, a 721% return. So this one, I think, is a more accurate uh, representation of the gain. So you can see I have an average share price of $133. It currently costs about $1,100 and something dollars. I have 8.4 shares. I'll be having 80 soon. That was that's a good one. I've, I've struck out on Tesla because I, I held it and then I sold it before it ballooned. Uh, for Amazon, I have also bought it and held it and then sold it before it ballooned. And then Bitcoin as well. It's it's a shame. I've also bought that when it was around like 3,000, 4,000. I held about like one and a half Bitcoins and I sold it before it ballooned. And then I actually sold my Bitcoin for Digibyte and yeah, that was a mistake. So I've struck out a couple times, friends. So this is the one that it, it, at the moment, it appears to be my golden child. It appears to be the one win that I have under my belt. To be honest, I've lost so much money on the others that this is, it's good finally. <laughs> you know, it's good finally. So, but that's the hard part of investing. You just never know. You just never know. And now for the topic for this week's video, friends. I want to discuss the difficult decisions of career development. <sighs> Just taking a small sip of coffee here before we continue to go down. My voice, my voice, I'm getting a little, a little raspy. So friends, the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic specifically is I've been mentioning it over the last couple of videos. I'm waiting on this next job opportunity, this next job opportunity to, to fall into place. It finally fell into place yesterday yesterday was my very first day and you know I, I say it fell into place because you got to start you got to actually have a first day and get in there and okay this is my next job now before it's truly official right you do the tentative the, the official offer letter you know all that onboarding paperwork well yesterday i actually started picked up my equipment and it is official i went from working as a prison nurse never having worked in a hospital to now working as a nurse consultant. It's an entry level nurse consultant, but it's for the state of California. You know, I decided to still stay with the state. I'll still be getting a pension, which I'm happy for, you know, building up my financial security and foundation on the back end with a pension. If it's there, cool, right? Great. If it's not, while well, I'm investing on my own with dividends, you know, financially trying to set my future up. And then if it all works out, well, now I got this, I got my pension too. So that was my mindset, right? There's pros to this new opportunity. One, it's, an, it's a promotion. Like now I work as a nurse consultant. I'm a little bit scared about the shoes I have to fill, but that comes with the territory, right? Of taking a promotion. And this is a lane that I want to go in. The other lane, the other option that I tried and didn't enjoy was being a supervisor, right? Being a nurse supervisor. I would have made significantly more money already but I just couldn't do the work-life balance. I couldn't do the babysitting. I couldn't do the, you know, running a unit with limited um, tools, right? Like, like middle management is hardly ever set up for success. And that, you know, that route, I'd have to be a supervisor, middle management and climb that ladder that way. And it was just too much. And for me, it wasn't worth, you know, sacrificing my day-to-day -day piece, right, to go that route. So when I decided that wasn't the route for me, I had to adjust and pivot. I recognized, hey, I got my master's. I can become a nurse consultant. And there's a whole nother runway of nurse consultant paths that each one will continue to increase my income as well. And I finally got into the entry one. And in two years, I qualify for the next one, which can be a significant pay bump. And then in three years total of this experience, I could qualify for some that pay very, very well. And it's a state job. I made the pivot finally. I started yesterday i get to work from home guys that is so cool to me 
I get to work from home as a nurse and it's surreal. <laughs> I worked as a prison nurse, you know, not having my phone, not having outside access to c civilization for eight, hour eight hours a day. You know, what people need to know is if you work in a prison, you are also locked in there for eight hours a day, just like an inmate. For me yesterday, it felt like I paroled. <laughs> I know like like it's not exactly the same but that's the closest i'll ever feel to that sensation like for me i started in a county jail working as an rn went to the prison almost did five years as an rn and yesterday i kind of paroled guys <laughs> i i started now as a nurse consultant one so i picked up my equipment i set up my desk yesterday and from tomorrow onward i get to work from home have a very flexible schedule I don't have to be a nursing supervisor and I have a runway again to in about two years, three years, make a significant, significant more amount of money. And as I'll mention here on some of these, you know, there's some cons to it though. It's not all of sunshine and rainbows. And this is why I want to talk about the difficult decisions of career development. With all that side story out the way, right? Put a timestamp. Let's get to it. So the difficult decisions with career development friends. The things that I'm realizing early on in my career, because I've only been in the workforce for about five and a half years, not quite six, but I've continued to kind of keep my foot on the gas. I graduated college with a bachelor's. About two and a half years into the workforce, I decided to get my master's to have it right in place in case I need open doors, right? People say, hey, get your master's, it's important you know, open doors. So for this first one, getting straight into it now, it's a rather lonely path. So the thing that I mean by this is that career development, if you're on this path of career development, you're gonna realize it is a rather lonely path. When I took my master's, it was just me. No one else was like, hey, you know, let's go take our master's. <clears throat> and even before then, hey, you know, go for your bachelor's. Like my friend group, I kind of had to leave them behind. I left my friend group behind because we had like different ideas and I'm talking about high school friends and you know old town friends and things like that. I kind of got to a point where I just realized if I wanted to get to the places I want to go right in my career, in my life, make the amount of money I want to make one day possibly, the path itself is lonely. It's lonely. No one's going to tell you to do something. You have to decide on your own and then when you decide, it's going to be lonely too. You know, like going back to get my master's was lonely. Right now, leaving my job for this pay, you know, for this promotion as a nurse consultant was a lonely path. No one is coming with me, right? And this is how career development will continue to go in your career. You're gonna have to make difficult decisions alone, you know, because most people you're gonna realize are just gonna stay where they're at. They're gonna get comfortable. They're gonna fear change. They're gonna fear growth because it's scary. You know, taking this next opportunity for me as a nurse consultant was is scary. Trying out the supervisory position I tried almost about a year ago now was scary. You know, these things are scary, right? Going back to school is scary. A lot of people you're gonna realize get stuck in that fear, get stuck in that comfort, and they just stay and they kind of wonder like why their life and their career is the way it is. Maybe that's fine for them, right? And that's okay if, if that's how you want to go about your career. But there are people that want to continue to advance and continue to improve and continue to find ways to increase their income. And if that's you, just know it's going to be rather lonely. It's just something you're going to have to just identify either by yourself or now that I'm telling you understand, but it is going to be lonely. And don't allow that loneliness, you know, just understand that that is part of it. Like for me yesterday, I went to my very first day as a nurse consultant one, I just thought back to school and I just thought about like how many of my classmates are doing this, right? Which is the path that I'm doing. Like I didn't work in a hospital. Most of my classmates worked in a hospital. I went to go work where I wanted to, which was in the prison setting. And that was a lonely decision on its own. No one kind of did that path with me. And in fact, everyone was telling me not to do it. I guess I got comfortable with that early on but you never truly fully get comfortable with this idea that man like i wish i could do this with someone else if you wait for people to do it with you'll never 
be able to do it. So just understand that if you're on a path of career development, like finding promotions and finding ways to increase your income through your employment, right? Which is like your primary source of income. Don't wait for people. Don't wait for people to make decisions. You know, don't do it with someone. It's truly you and you only. And just understand that it's going to be lonely. It's a lonely path. And I think it's worth it. But it's kind of scary, you know, for it to be just you. But just understand that. It's taken me a couple movements and pivots to realize this. That it is a rather lonely path, if that makes sense. So this one, number two, friends. It will require sacrifice and investments. So career development is not easy. Like I just said, it's a lonely path. And it's lonely because a lot of people fear growth. They fear change. They get comfortable. And they don't want to disrupt that, which is fully understandable. You know, I came from a state prison. There's been people there that worked there for 20 plus years. You know, I went in in five years, I left, you know, and they're still there. Not to say that that was intentional, but I know I couldn't live it. I couldn't live my life that way. You know, I have two decades to still go. And when I look in my own horizon, I see the dream that I want to be at. Not to say my life isn't great now, but I stay motivated for more. That is my end goal. Sometimes to get to that place, you're going to have to sacrifice and you're going to have to invest. Examples of this, invest time, right? Energy into getting a higher degree, right? Invest in yourself to feel uncomfortable and participate in opportunities that are going to give you experience, right? These are investments. Right? And I did this early on in my career. And that's why five years in, even without hospital experience, I'm already a nurse consultant. Entry level, I always add the asterisk. I know I kind of downplay it for myself, but I found a lane and I'm in a lane now that a lot of people aren't in this early in their career, but it can happen. And then if you sacrifice, and sacrifice, friends, this is where a con of this next opportunity comes into play. Right now, I'm making one of the biggest sacrifices in my career. And you're going to be like, Jesse, what is that? Well, at the moment, it's financial. You know, I got to sacrifice my schedule or something like that because I get to work from home. I get some incentives. My schedule is now very flexible. My boss is very cool, very chill. I have big shoes to fill, but there's a lot of trust in this position for me to be just a responsible adult. I don't have to check in all the time. I don't have to check out all the time, but I have to be good at my job. But the sacrifice itself comes financially. For me, I'm taking a really big pay cut, which is very odd, I know. It's like a promotion, but a pay cut. But I had to do it this way because I saw it as a sacrifice, short term, a bigger reward in about two or three years and definitely in a decade from now. In a decade from now, I might be making around 180, 190K. Right now, friends, I'm making about 107K. In the prison, I was making 134K. So I went from 134,000, literally from as of two days ago, to tomorrow starting a job that I now make $107,000. As a nurse consultant, but $107,000. I took a $27,000 pay cut for this opportunity, for this experience. This experience right here is so valuable to me that in about three, five years, like I said, in a decade, I would make in 190,000 at least. And sure, that's the cap, but with inflation, it probably might be more. And then I never know what more opportunities come from being a nurse consultant, right, for the state of California. So it's the experience I need. And in order to get it, I had to make a financial sacrifice. So if you're on, a, if you're on the fence about making a big change, friends, I think as long as you see the bigger picture, and if you have to adjust and pivot to a point where it becomes a sacrifice, make sure it's worth it. Make sure that that sacrifice is only temporary. But sometimes that is what it takes. It takes a temporary sacrifice. It will take investments of time, energy, money to get to where you want to go in your career. That's it here for number two. And for number three, friends, we're going down the line here. The outcome is unknown until it happens. 100%. So for me, friends, I'm paving my own path still there's not a single nurse i've seen in my career do the path that i'm trying to do one i was always worried by never working in a hospital that worried me 
I went to go work in the prison setting and the county jail corrections, right? I gained a lot of experience there though. I absorbed as much as I could and I think that's what allowed me to move fast. And in addition, I got kind of lucky with some opportunities, but I did take advantage of that experience. And then I also went back to get my master's. And fortunately for me, I started with my bachelor's. So all these things together kind of give, gave me a good foundation to work from quickly. But still, the outcome for me is unknown in my now promotion, right, of being a nurse consultant. I want to make what, what I think I can make in about a decade or less from now, right, which I told you. But that outcome is still unknown. It's not guaranteed. And that's the hard part about career development is you kind of have to go on this path, on this journey. It will require investments. It will require sacrifice. You'll realize it's a lonely path. And then on top of this, the outcome is still unknown. There's no guarantee that just because I'm a nurse consultant and in two years I'll qualify for the next spot, it doesn't mean I'll get it. I think I will though. My mindset is telling me I will. So I keep my foot on the gas, but still it's not guaranteed. I initially thought I was gonna be able to become a nurse consultant, the higher paying one, sooner. But it turned out I didn't qualify. Turns out I need to do this one. And then this one requires a pay cut, right, to accept. You have to be able to adjust and pivot despite the outcome not being guaranteed. Just know the outcome remains unknown. I like to think of it as the path illuminates as you walk it. So you have to make the best version of you, trust yourself, set yourself up as best that you can, and then just take it as it comes, and then hopefully the path will illuminate as you walk it, if that makes sense. And then for this last one, friends, it's very difficult to see it through. I know I'm only five and a half years into the workforce, so that's why I put it this way. In five and a half years, I've moved you know this amount, which I say is pretty quick in hindsight, right? I think it's pretty quick, but it's difficult to see it through. When I first started my career, I would have never seen myself as a nurse consultant, one working for the state of California. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go be a county jail nurse. And then from there, oh, that, that, you know, being a prison nurse makes sense. They have better benefits. So I went to go work as a prison nurse. In the prison, I worked in so many different areas, gained like care management experience, worked in appeals and grievances, you know, worked in the primary care clinic as an outpatient nurse, you know, got all this experience, but I didn't know any of that was gonna happen. The opportunities came to me, I took advantage of them. Sometimes because I was doing well, other opportunities just landed in my lap. Again, I took advantage of them. I didn't know that that was gonna happen. So it's difficult to fully plan your career step by step. And because of that, it's gonna be difficult to see it all the way through. So for me, the way I like to focus on my goals when it comes to career development is pick a horizon. Pick the biggest picture you can imagine. For me, it's living in a nice neighborhood, living in a nice house, driving a nice car, having a relationship that is intact, it's healthy. You know, it makes me feel good when I go home. It doesn't necessarily make me feel better when I leave, right? Some people have the opposite lifestyles. And then I'm bringing everything I care about with me right? Inner peace, a healthy body. You know, this is, this is the vision I see for myself one day. And in order for me to get that, I need a good career, a good foundational piece. And that is what I'm working on through career development. And by saying all this, the in-between part, right? From where you are today to that horizon, to that dream, the in-between is going to be difficult because you're not going to be able to see the details. You're not going to be able to see it through. You have to just trust yourself, walk this path as it illuminates, and just trust and build yourself up and trust and build yourself up more. Set yourself up as best you can to be the best player you can be in this game of life. So that's going to be it, friends. A couple reasons why I think, from my experience, career development is full of difficult decisions and it's not an easy process. I enjoy making videos like this. You know, part of my channel is career development. It's kind of talking about my story. My career is my biggest shovel, my primary source of income. And to be a dividend investor, you need a good shovel. I mean, if you go work somewhere and you're making $20 an hour, sure, you can invest. You can invest a lot more if you're making 50, 60, or more dollars an hour, right? You kind of have to continue to find ways to improve that tool of yours, improve that shovel over time. And that, to me, I label as career development. 
So as always, friends, I will see you guys on the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Continue on your own endeavors. If you got any career changes coming up, good luck on yours. I know exactly how you feel. I am terrified right now. But I think, well, I do know. I know it does get better. See you on the next one.